Hello? Let's get started. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our topic. We are, today, we are talking about open switch in Neutron and, uh, uh, and uh, the performance challenge, challenges we have run into. And uh, we also come up with a solution uh, based on open switch hardware. So let us introduce us first. My name is Gong Yongsheng, and uh, working for United Stack. And United Stack is an uh, open, stack, open stack service and the product provider. Uh, we have a booth in, in the hall, so you're welcome to visit our booth. Bo, can you introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Bo. <laughs> My name is Yin Yang Bo, and uh, I come from the 99 Cloud. And I'm also the administrator of the TriStack Dossian uh, test bed project in Chinese OpenStack user group. Yeah. So why we, why we choose uh, OpenWiz switch? So um, on, on, uh, in April this year, the OpenStack user committee conducted a survey. It got 197 deployments of OpenStack from about 400, uh, 400 respondents. It shows us that the open with switch, um, the, there are about 39% of the open stack deployments which use in the content is, is adopting open switch solutions. So the open with switch agents is very, uh, is very popular uh, with, with the open stack uh, uh, deployer. <coughs> And we have the we have the reference URL there. If you, if if you are interested in the survey, you can go there. So this is why choose why us why we choose the open switch topic today. So uh, the board will will do the following presentations about this session. Okay. Thanks, Yong Shun. So today uh, I'm going to share you some uh, open with which usage in OpenStack, and uh, especially in uh, my open with which experience to build a tri-stack dossier, uh, completely OpenStack SDN environment. Uh, the next we will talk about the open floor a little bit, uh, and uh, what the problems I met in the uh, deploy open with switch in OpenStack. So the last one is the possible acceleration solutions for open with switch, especially in performance issue. <laughs> okay, the first uh, we are going through open with switch usage in neutron. So as we uh, may, maybe ha have already know the OpenStack deployment in popular. Uh, we usually have the two networks, one for the private network. Uh, it's for VM communicating for each other, and uh, the public network is, uh, uh, helps, we, uh, helps VMs to uh, access out, out, outside. Uh, in the tri dossier architecture, we uh, installed the uh, uh, mostly OpenStack components in our box. Uh, includes the Keystone, Glance, and the Cinder API, Nova API, and so on. Especially the Neutron server is also in our controller node. We have also have a network node. Uh, uh, this node is installed mostly uh, neutron related components. Uh, it uh, uh, includes the L2 agent, L3 agent, and DHCP agent. Okay, hi, uh, and the uh, metadata agent here. Yeah. The rest of the machine is uh, installed as the computer node. It's uh, set up as uh, set up as Nova computer and uh, OVS agent. Uh, it's also knows 
uh, L2 agent here. So we can put up the VM on the computer node. When the VM set up, the data path will be like this. VM send packets to the OpenV switch and uh, going through the private uh, switch. And approaching to network node, then the last one, last stop is the public switch. Maybe this public switch connected to the uh, like uh, uh, public router. <coughs> so let's zone in the computer node. When we spend the computer node. It runs out of the VMs here. So this computer node connected with the physical network. Also, as we know, the VLAN mode and uh, the GIE mode. So the GIE mode uh, present here is uh, uh, show us draw us the dash, and the physical network draws us the solid line. If the VM want to access to each other, then the packet will go in through the GRE tunnels. So um, as we always load the neutron supports a couple of the network types, like GRE mode and the v VLAN mode and the, the flat DHCP. So in this case, we are using the GRE tunnels. Okay, let's see it again. Uh, these networks uh, are isolated by the VLAN tag. So the blue tenant VM can just only access to blue VMs. The green one is only uh, able to access the green one. All this VM is bridged on the OpenV switch in this case. So for example, this is VLAN bridge. <coughs> Our VM uh, network, uh, network device is show us the tab bridged on the BI int. BI int has the uh, connection to the physical network device. Uh, actually, the BI ETH1 also is a bridge. Uh, it connects to BR into to uh, ETH1, so uh, VETH VAS here. Uh, the right side is the uh, computer node installed, so it has ju just only one bridge here. Uh, the left side is the uh, network node, but it also have the uh, computer node. So it has two bridges, one for BRINT and uh, one for BREX. BREX is bridged to ETH2 and uh, it can able to access the public router. So the VLAN bridge is pretty simple here and uh, When we change to GRE mode, it's uh, complicated a little bit. So uh, here is uh, both two hosts uh, has one more bridge here. You may say the BI tunnel uh, is for tunnel connections. The, the ETH1 interface has both have the IP address here. It's used for uh, tunnels endpoints. So you can see the BR int has a patch port to connect the BR turn. This is for connected for uh, uh, put the BR turn and the BR int together. So when we VM has the tap interface uh, tap port on the OpenV switch, the VM can uh, approach the BR int bridge to the BR turn and uh, put the packet to uh, another machine through this, this tunnels. <clears throat> so 
So after that, we can uh, talk about the neutron workflow with these plugins. The first, we can start neutron server at the uh, control node. The neutron server uh, will prepare the data database connection and the message queue connections. Uh, if we have the neutron database already here, so it just uh, do, uh, do nothing. But uh, if the neutron database not exist, uh, when we start neutron first time, it will create the database structures. But uh, it, uh, do, it will do nothing here in this diagram. So uh, let's start it open with switch agent next. When we start open with switch agent, it will check the BRInt bridge. If BRInt bridge not exists, uh, the open with switch agent will, uh, will return failure here. It also uh, prepared the tunnel connections. So it will create a BR10 bridge here. When we start the open with switch agent, so we have the near to network connected, so we can start rest uh, components of the neutron. The next, uh, we start the L3 agent, and uh, you can see it will check the BIX exists. If BI, BIX not exists, it also return failure here. And next, we can start a DHCP agent and a metadata agent. All these three agents uh, include L3 agent, DHCP agent, and the metadata agent. It's, uh, have, uh, they are no has the partic particular orders, so you can put them in the same time. When we uh, prepare these agents, the neutron server, is already started. So we can create the network. When we create a network, uh, mostly we, 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 uh, we create a network through the uh, CLI command for the end and the uh, web request like Horizon. We can create a network by horizon. Uh, whether the CLI command or the web request, it, it sends the command to the neutron server by REST API. Then neutron server will put this request and the commands to the message queue. Uh, so when we create network, uh, L3 agent will receive the a request, the L2 agent will prepare the queue DHCP namespace here and uh, create, uh, create some ports for DHCP. So uh, at this point, uh, you, can, you can use the OVS VS control command to show the ports of the OpenV switch. So we can see the queue DHCP port in the uh, queue DHCP namespace. We usually create network with the subnets, right? So if we have the sub subnets, we, we need to, we need to uh, DHCP endpoint here. The next one is create routers. Uh, because the VM attached to the OpenV switch, uh, they, they need the router to access the outside in, uh, network. So when we create the routers, the routers uh, L3 agent will prepare the Q, Q router namespace in the in the network node. <coughs> the Q router namespace setup when all all the network uh, environments uh, was set up, so we can uh, put the VM with the network. So you can say we can put a VM from outside or in, in the same host. 
VM, when the VM boot, the VM will send the DHCP request to the QDHCP namespace, and uh, uh, DHCP uh, server will return the IP configs. In this case, we uh, we use the DNS mask. The, so DNS mask returns the IP configs to the VM. Then VM can have a gateway set up here. And uh, now we, VM can be accessed the uh, public network. Uh, I previously to talk a little uh, open way switch in neutral. So let's go through the op open flow section. Uh, open flow actually is a uh, uh, control protocol in the network management. So uh, we can hear a lot of the SDN concept or the open flow controller concept. Uh, in this case, we have a open way switch uh, installed here and uh, it, it, it connects with a open flow controller like a uh, deal. Uh, or the open daylight. So it's connect to the open controller with the security channel, so we can have the uh, a, a control center uh, to, to manage this uh, open way switch centralized. Uh, NetFlow usually contains the, uh, at least one description of the flow and uh, at least the one actions here. So in this case, we have the uh, flow description with import uh, equals to wild, uh, wild carded. The actions is output seven. So with this diagram, the in incoming packet sent to the port two or casually port. So the out put the uh, out, outcoming packets will send to the port seven. The next one is uh, we, specific, uh, we specify the import is port one and the output uh, is flood. This will be a broadcast flow. This is a simple flow here. Uh, the next slide will explain the uh, uh, flow tables with L2 population. So, Yongsheng, would you like to take this one? Sure. So, so, so this, this, uh, this slide just shows us that how the open switch agent organizes the flow tables. Now, you can see that we, are, uh, we, have many, we have many flow tables here. The, the table table zero table zero is the is is the first first table. It will for the for the traffic from the VM. It, it will direct the traffic to the table one. The table one table one will will, uh, will tell the difference between the unicast or the multicast traffic. If it is the unicast traffic, it will direct the Traffic to table twenty. Table twenty will uh, <coughs> will will pass the traffic to to uh, to the to, to the GRE tunnel tunnel port. Then the uh, then the traffic will, will will go out to uh, to remote endpoint. This is the unicast the broadcast uh, unicast traffic. If actually, if it is the broadcast traffic, yeah. We can actually have yeah. an element to uh, show. Everything is there. Okay. If it is the broadcast broadcast traffic, the table one table one will, will direct the traffic to the table twenty one. Table twenty one will will flood to the GRE tunnel tunnel point. And uh, if the traffic is is coming from the outside through the GRE tunnel port, the, the traffic will will also first go to ta uh, table zero. Table zero will know that it is from outside. And then uh, the traffic is directed to the table zero, table two. Table two will convert the GRE tunnel ID to the local local VNAN ID, 
and then the traffic will be passed to table, table 10. So this is uh, how the flow tables are organized. And uh, I, want, I have a... Uh, Okay, yeah. It's the unicast traffic. And, and then we have broadcast traffic. And then for incoming traffic, so you can see that the flow tables are, are organized in the uh, how they organized in the OpenV switch agent. In the Havala release, uh, the, the Neutron team introduced another, uh, a, a new mechanism. This is L2 population. L2 population will improve, will, will fill in the forwarding database entry, entries of the OpenV switch bridge if it is the uh, town. It is the tunnel, uh, tunnel network. So, so the tunnel, the GIE tunnel will be managed by the OpenV switch agent uh, as needed. So, so here, the, and, and when, the traffic is, when the traffic is coming here, the, the, the needed tunnel, tunnel, the tunnel point will be created. So it, uh, it, it is different from the previous, previous, OpenV, uh, previous release. Uh, in, uh, in a great release. So, go back. Yes. Okay, back to... all right. Uh, so here's some uh, pro problem statement. Uh, I will define this statement when I uh, use OpenVSwitch open in the tristyle.cn deployment. So uh, this section will have uh, some in Inter <coughs> interview with the uh, open with switch uh, performance issues. So I'm gonna ask you guys uh, how, how many people uh, already deployed open with switch here? Uh, a lot of guys. Um, do you use the GIE tunnel for the uh, open with switch connections? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, at the TriStack deployment, we have about uh, ten servers. Uh, this is uh, not. Uh, this is not an, uh, many servers. So we have uh, the in this diagram we have twelve servers here. But uh, as we know, uh, the GIE tunnel will connect uh, server to server. Uh, it actually is a point-to-point -point connections. So if we have 12 servers, you can see each, each server will connect to each other, uh, all of others. So the tunnel numbers will be n minus 1. When this tunnel uh, created, the server will handle 11 about 11 tunnels in this in these servers, uh, each of them. So the tunnel performance issue is uh, uh, appear to all the deployments. <coughs> so we can see a lot of flow tables in the uh, open way switch. That's why I bring this problem uh, up because uh, we find a lot of solution to solve the tunnel uh, performance issues. The, the next, the next uh, problem is uh, if we use uh, GRE tunnels, uh, the VM communicated to the other VM on the different uh, host, it will be have the MTU issues. So uh, if the packets uh, approaching to the tunnel, the packet will be attached to the GIE head. Uh, the GIE head uh, usually to break the uh, connection. So it maybe have some uh, 
some HTTP, HTTP server compatible problem. Uh, in our case, uh, the VM on the uh, GI Eternal is not able to access some website, uh, especially most uh, chi Chinese portal uh, can't be accessible. So the next problem is the uh, flow matching. Um, in the open way switch, the first packet always uh, be missed or hit. Uh, then it missed the flow, it will uh, to ask the V switch D, which is runs, uh, run on uh, user space. Um, even it will hit the, the pass, it's still a uh, slow pass here. So uh, if we have a lot of the short flow, uh, the performance uh, will decrease uh, uh, considerable. Um, especially in the, the older, older version of OpenV switch, uh, if you are running uh, 1.4 version of the OpenV switch, it only used a single core on the on the on your server. If you have multi-core server uh, configuration, it only used one. But the uh, latest uh, version has changed. Uh, thanks to uh, thanks to the multi-threading mode and uh, mega mega flows, it uh, uh, improved the performance of the OpenV switch flow tables. But even you have the multi-core uh, to to match match these flows, it also has the uh, locking or dead off problems here. So uh, the the question is the how we match this flow quickly and uh, uh, improve the CPU usage. When when I was uh, uh, first time to deploy uh, OpenStack with the uh, GRE Eternals and uh, uh, OpenV switch. You can see the network node has a lot of the uh, ports on the network node. Because we have uh, about 100 network in the, in the neutron and uh, about uh, 50 routers in there. So the OpenV switch on the network node has about uh, 30 hundreds ports, and the flow table is uh, very long. Uh, this situation uh, takes us to uh, a harder position. Is uh, the bandwidth is uh, is very limited, so the the first problem is the how we to uh, improve the flow matching. Then we find the solution. Uh, uh, we think about how how about uh, we put the OpenV switch in a uh, in a hardware switch, so it can be uh, accelerated with the hardware chip chip. Uh, especially use the uh, ASIC or FPGA mode to to act, uh, accelerate to accelerate the flow matching problem. So we find a, a network switch vendor. It's called Syntag, uh, and uh, uh, their team is working closely with us. So we we have uh, improved architecture here. We have the uh, hardware switch. Running OpenV switch, so we can still use the uh, OpenV switch agent to manage this hardware switch, and it also be uh, create tunnel between the hardware switches, so we can uh, decrease the tunnel numbers here. And in in a hardware, we can put a lot of flow tables uh, in in their switches uh, uh, in the uh, this model of switch we can we can handle the 20k of flow tables, 
and uh, about uh, 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 30 or uh, 40k uh, max. Uh, I, I don't remember the specific number, so if uh, 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 please correct me if I, I was wrong. So we have this switch connect to, to the, this computer node. So you can see uh, the open, open computer node as a rack. Uh, this switch is a TOR, it's a toss switch. So we connect, we connect racks uh, between this switch uh, to cross the racks. So we have two racks. Uh, if we have two racks, so we just need one tunnel here. In the computer node, we can still use the bridge, Linux bridge. Uh, we have benchmark, the Linux bridge is always uh, fast, faster than OpenV switch. So you can still use the OpenV switch in the computer node, and uh, uh, you can also choose the Linux bridge to bridge these uh, VMs to the switch. Uh, this is the hardware switch uh, solution. Uh, as you know, uh, as you may know, the other uh, switch vendors maybe ha have the, maybe also have the OpenV switch solution like, like PK8. I, I don't know if the PK8 guys here, so uh, I, I just bring it up. Uh, why we choose the Syntec? Because uh, Syntec is an uh, amazing pr product. For, for the open stack, and uh, uh, they are near with us. Uh, uh, I'm based in Shanghai, they are based in Suzhou, so it's the uh, nearest uh, the city here. Uh, and there has another solutions. Uh, if you, you are interested with the flow processing, uh, you may be hear about the DPDK from Intel, and the PF ring or NetMap. Uh, I just uh, started a little bit of about the DPDK. DPDK is basically have uh, a bunch of the uh, API SDK libraries. So it has three key important components here. The DPDK provides the um, CPU, uh, uh, CPU affinity and uh, UIO and uh, huge, uh, huge table page. The huge, uh, huge table page is provided by uh, Linux kernel, and uh, UIO is, uh, is, is created by Intel's SDK. Uh, we can start with the huge table page. It can uh, improve the usage efficiency of the memories, and uh, uh, UIO can drive the network, network device on the user space. So uh, when I saw the OpenV switch slides uh, in the, in the uh, Linux conference, uh, they, they, bring, uh, they bring the, uh, the possible performance solution is uh, put all packets on the user space, not, not need to uh, change, switch to the kernel. So, DPDK UIO can provide you provide, uh, provide the math to process these flows, all these flows on the user space. The CPU affinity uh, provides the function to uh, focus one CPU core to uh, focus handle one network device. Like if we have four four cores uh, of the CPU and uh, we can uh, net the core one uh, folks to pro process the uh, packets on the ETH1, core two folks to handle the packets for the ETH2. And with the GRE eternals problems, and uh, we can uh, change to the VXNet mode. Uh, we are now choose the VXNet because the VXNet is uh, very new for us, and uh, uh, we are not, uh, not quite familiar with the VXNAN. So, but the new, newest uh, Neutron release is, has already have uh, support VXNAN. Um, so if you guys want to try, 
uh, it's a good choice. Uh, the last one is some uh, open with switch debugging, uh, debugging tips. So if you are using uh, open with, with, if you have the problem with using open with switch, uh, there are some some tips for the debug. The first is to test the basic connectivity, uh, because uh, uh, we, we can we, we possibly to bridge a wrong interface on the open with switch, like the. Uh, we uh, intend to uh, bridge to the ETH1, but uh, ETH1 has no wire connected. You can use the TCP dump to see expect uh, packets uh, are on the well. So uh, the uh, TCP dump is uh, uh, very easy to use. Then I have the another uh, method is uh, we can also just use the bridge and without the uh, open way switch. But mostly we have a uh, open flow set up on the open way switch, so uh, the, the packets may not hit the flow. Uh, we can use some open way switch talking to, uh, to debug this problem, like OVS o OF control, OVS app control, and uh, OVS DP, uh, DP control. Uh, uh, this all tools is very uh, amazing. So you can just uh, need the, you can just need this tool to 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 address your your network issues. Uh, so uh, in this section, it has only 40 minutes. Uh, we we just uh, have all slides here. Uh, we have a couple minutes if you. You want to ask some questions? Uh, uh, we use the open way switch in our uh, OpenStack Grizzly environment. And uh, we found a problem that uh, the OVS works uh, maybe a little better in the uh, Ubuntu environment than in the Red Hat. Uh, for, for example, in some use cases, the OVS will drop ARP package uh, uh, in the Red Hat environment, and uh, we tried 1.4, 1.6, and uh, 1.9 version of Open with Switch, but uh, I guess there are still some problems uh, ab about the function of the packet, uh, the pack transmission in the Open with Switch. So, can you give me? Uh, give us some advice about the uh, usage or debug of open open way switch in the Red Hat environment. Thank you. Uh, in Red Hat environments, I'm, I'm not uh, familiar with the Red Hat from, uh, environment, uh, but uh, I have these issues in uh, Ubuntu also. So uh, if you are use the uh, version 1.4, that's uh, actually uh, older version. Uh, you can see you have a uh, package job because the CPU can't handle the flows, uh, flows matching anymore. So you may be want to uh, upgrade your open with switch or you can decrease your flow table size. Uh, I have a question. Great presentation, by the way. A uh, lot of useful information. So you mentioned uh, the Linux bridge is faster than the OVS bridge. So what, per, what kind of performance testing did you guys do, and why do you think the Linux bridge is faster, I mean, from, a, from an implementation point of view? Uh, actually, we have some uh, benchmark with the uh, uh, mass, of the, mass of the flow tables. So uh, Linux basically put the, put the package through the uh, uh, device directly. Uh, but in the open with switch, it's, uh, it's always to put this uh, uh, package to the, uh, how to say, it always have an app call to, to con con contact the with switch D. So it have a context exchange here. Uh, but uh, in the newest uh, version of open with switch, it's not uh, different to, to too much. Okay.
And that's the one. Um, was VLAN an option for you, or did you have to use GRE tunnels? What? Would you like this one? <laughs> what? Uh, excuse me? So you used um, GRE for tenant isolation? Yeah. Could you have used VLANs instead? Uh, yeah, we finally uh, use, uh, have to use VLAN instead. Okay. Yeah. Did you still wind up with your VLAN cap, 4096? Yeah. Okay. So? Uh, so, uh, I, I have uh, boots in the, uh, in, in, in the, uh, in the how to? So if you have another question, so you just can find me there. Thank you.